it's Korean, it's got a twin turbocharged V6 engine in the front and it's rear wheel drive. It is of course the much anticipated 2018 Kia Stinger GT. Inspired by the original AM115 Maserati Ghibli of the late 1960s and early 1970s, the Stinger is the Korean brand's first attempt at a proper GT car, a genuine Gran Turismo. It certainly looks the part, but does it nail the brief? Let's find out. We recently checked out the 2018 Hyundai i30N and now we've got this thing. So if you think Korean cars are still just cheap and cheerful runabouts, well, think again. Finished in Aurora Black, the Stinger GT has quite a menacing look to it and I think this colour really shows that off. Starting with the front, uh, I want to show you this Tiger Nose grille which is consistent to a lot of Kias but this one's got this nice dark chrome mirror type finish on it that you can see and hidden in the main grille bit here, I think hidden quite well really, you've got the forward camera but it flows really nicely so it's quite hard to uh, tell that it's actually there on that front grille. Beneath that we've got another front intake that you can see again with more of this dark chrome trim on it and inside there about half of that intake is taken up by an intercooler which you can see in plain sight there is this plastic non-vented area here we'll get to a few plastic non-vented bits as we progress what is cool as well as these side air curtains they're called here and that actually does funnel some uh, air in to cool the brakes uh, which we'll get to later on the car also comes with automatic led headlights and led daytime running lights um, and the headlights have got a dynamic bending function so it'll look around corners and this really cool nine crystal indicator set up there that you can see and if i show you what it looks like there we go really cool touch as we move down the car, we can see more of this dark chrome trim effect here. This is on the fender vent, and that again is an actual functional fender vent. It uh, takes air in from here again, helping cool the brakes, and then funnel it down the side of the car for better aerodynamics. That same dark chrome is again used on the wing mirror there with this cool indicator design. Looking at the car in profile, you can see just how much bigger the rear overhang is compared to the front overhang, but it has quite a sleek shape and it is a nice design. It looks good on the road, it looks good standing still. The alloy wheels are 19 inches up front and on the rear, and at the front you've got 22540 R19s, and on the rear, 255 35s. We'll stay at the back for a second. Inside you've got quite a decent braking setup on the Stinger GT. You've got red painted Brembo brakes front and rear. You've got a two piston caliper clamping 340 mil ventilated discs at the back and at the front you've got even bigger four piston Brembo calipers clamping 350 mil ventilated discs. Now while it does look like the Kia wheel has this cool race style centre cap, it's actually just a plastic cover that pops out and has the wheel nuts behind it. So looks cool, but really just a little bit fake. Moving to the back, we've got LED tail lights, and I've got to say they really remind me of the current shape Maserati Gran Turismo with this clear centre and the red outer. Again, you've got a nine crystal design indicator there, which lights up like that. So mirroring the front, which is pretty cool. And then you've got this integrated rear spoiler along the edge here, which again, I quite like, I think is really neat. What's interesting at the back as well, obviously you've got your GT badge, but this Stinger badge on the back, that's the only Stinger badge on the outside of the whole car. The only other place it says Stinger on the car is on the floor mats, which I'll show you shortly. Beneath that, we've got a chrome tipped quad exhaust which you heard earlier and it's hard to see on this aurora black car but that is actually a gloss black rear diffuser as well again this sort of plastic pseudo venting in here doesn't actually do anything it's uh it's not actually a vent it's all just covered up hard plastic you can see the rear diffuser under there keeping the 
purely aesthetic theme going. At the back here, you've also got, so exhaust there, at the back here, you've also got completely fake rear air vent there as well. Again, I'm just kind of not sure why brands keep putting fake things like that on cars. I don't really get it myself. One of the other things that's been the uh, root of a lot of contention around, especially around the internet, are these really long reflectors on the back of the car. Now, you don't notice them as much on the red cars. I personally don't really see what the big fuss is about, but let me know in the comments what you think. Is it too big? Is it too small? Does it ruin the look of the car or do you just not care? Now, a pretty cool, neat trick that the Stinger has is this power tailgate. It's a smart power tailgate. So if you stand next to the car for about three seconds, just with the key in your pocket, it'll automatically open. So you don't even have to hit the uh, button to get it open, which is kind of cool. Now, good but not great is the Kia Stinger's boot. It's 406 litres. That's expandable to 1,114 litres with those 60-40 split fold rear seats dropped. You've got a couple of tie down points in the boot. You've got four tie down points in all. Underneath the boot floor, you've got this very neat cover. In the bag is your cargo net if you want one. And underneath that is your space saver spare tire. If we have a look inside, it's pretty plush at first glance. You've got nice trim details, some nice elements, nice styling elements. Now, like I said, at first glance, it, it looks pr pretty plush. You've got these eight-way power adjustable sport seats up front here. They also have a adjustable thigh support there, which is nice. And you can also adjust the bolsters the side bolsters there, they adjust as well. Not sure if you can see that, but they do, I promise. They're red Nappa leather, which I think looks pretty good. And we can see they also got some GT embossing on the headrests. The real problem comes from this very low roof line and seats that quite frankly just don't go low enough. And that means if you're like me and six foot or even taller, it means getting in is actually a little bit tricky. Once you're in though, as the seat puts me in my position, you'll find that what Kia calls cocooned intimacy, other people might just call slightly cramped. Uh, especially with the door closed, everything's really close and it's nice that it sort of encloses you into the cabin, but it can feel a little claustrophobic. On closer inspection too, some of the materials aren't all that premium. You've got this sort of rubber dash top here with some, I think it is real stitching, but it, it just doesn't look all that nice. You've got hard scratchy plastics around the place. You've got hard scratchy plastics down here as well. Uh, and on the transmission tunnel there. The other thing is like the lights, are, the lights are kind of clicky. Same with the wiper and indicator stalks. They're just not all that nicely damped. Both seats are already also showing signs of wear in the leather. You got this mark here and there's more light scuffs on the driver's seat. Annoyingly to the front door pockets are uh, all just hard plastic with no rubber lining or felt lining or anything like that. Again, just feels quite cheap. That said, the Stinger GT is well and truly loaded with gear. There's keyless entry and a push button start, a flat bottom multifunction GT stamped leather wrapped steering wheel, a part analog, part digital instrument binnacle, rain sensing wipers, dual zone climate control, heating and cooling for both front seats, an electronic parking brake with an auto hold function, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and a panoramic glass sunroof with an automatic blind. There's also seven airbags and autonomous emergency braking, as well as an eight inch infotainment touchscreen with satellite navigation and a 360 degree camera where your Stinger GT is always white. Storage isn't bad though. You've got two rubber lined cup holders here. 
this little retractable bay here where you've got your 12 volt auxiliary and USB points. This is also a wireless charging mat and all of that's rubbery which is good so stuff doesn't slide around so I quite like that. You've got this little shelf in the front of the uh, center console there, which is kind of handy. And then a decent size center console, but it's quite large inside. This is all felt lined, which is nice. The catch though is this tray here, it's all just hard plastic, which means if you actually put something in it and you try and drive, it tends to slide around and be quite loud. So again, that's a little bit annoying. That should be rubber. Up the top, you've got a felt line sunglasses holder and the glove box is quite a decent size it's also home to one of the thickest owner's manuals I've ever seen so if we have a look look at the size of this Kia Stinger owner's manual that's an encyclopedia that's not a manual <laughs> lots to go through some light reading along with these Stinger GT floor mats for both driver and passenger. The driver also gets these sports alloy pedals. You probably can't see it, but it's also one of the biggest footrests I've ever seen, but the alloy pedals are a nice touch, as is this really nice suede headliner, which I think just really lifts the cabinet. Another thing I have to show you is this drive mode select dial. It doesn't click or anything, it just twists. But if we go up onto our instruments here, I can cycle through your smart mode, eco mode, comfort mode, sport mode, and custom mode. Now, each of those displays come up on the touch screen as well. So you've got your smart, eco, comfort, sport. And when we go into custom, we can click on settings and we can play with things like our engine and transmission. So you can adjust individually what things you'd like to set it up for. Your steering weight, you can adjust that too. Your suspension for the adaptive suspension, you can choose one of the two modes there. And the active engine sound, so you can have an enhanced engine note, which is just a synthesized noise into the cabin. But it's pretty cool that it has those things to play with. The very last thing I wanna show you is this head up display that hopefully you can see there. So we can turn that off or on, that makes it a little bit easy. Now we can adjust basic things like the height of the display, we can adjust the rotation if you want to, the brightness, the size as well. So we can, you'll see that change there. So we can have it small, medium or large, which is which is cool that you can adjust that. You can also have a content selector. So you can choose to have your navigation, your lane safety, your blind spot monitoring, all that sort of stuff to pop up on your head up display. But really cool is apart from just the size of your speedo, you can also choose the color of your speedo. So at the moment it's white. If we switch there, you can see it's orange and you can also adjust to green if you like that. I think white makes the most sense for me, but Again, really cool technology to have in a car like this. If we have a look in the back seat, and bear in mind these rear doors are pretty huge, so good luck in a car park with these doors. They are massive. And again, getting into the back is a similar issue as the front because of this sloping rear roof line. So it can be a little bit tricky. You just gotta watch your head getting in. Now on the plus side, you've got two Isofix compatible rear seats, the outboard rear seats. And again, overall, it looks pretty nice from uh, a distance. If we jump in, and like the front seats, the rear seats are pretty comfortable, but they're quite steeply raked in the backrest, so you tend to lean back when you get in. If we close the door, you've got nice trim materials. Generally, everything feels pretty well put together. The seats, like I said, are, are comfortable, more red Nappa leather, but Legroom is pretty good. Oh, I sit quite far forward, but you can see legroom's not bad. Headroom is a lot tighter. They're, again, that roof line, so headroom is a bit of a squeeze. I'll just show you, I don't know if you can see, but I'm six foot and there's not a whole ton of room there. So being much taller than six foot would be a bit squeezy in the back. But tow room, that's the real killer, especially with the seats low, which you need them to be to get in. Tow room, there's just no room for your toes at all. You do get rear air vents in the back though, as well as a 12 volt outlet and also a USB charge point there as well. Netted mat pockets, 
which is good too. Uh, and there's also your own interior light. Yes, it's bright. Uh, what's less good is this massive transmission tunnel floor hump, which means that while two adults in the back might be okay, I think a third would be a bit of a squeeze. There's also a fold down center armrest with these two cup holders here. Again, quite hard and scratchy, the material around there. And the releases are just up there to drop those rear seats if you need to. And you can see as well, it doesn't sit flat. So not perfect. Pop the bonnet and there it is. The twin turbocharged 3.3 litre Lambda 2 V6 with 272 kilowatts of power and 510 newton metres of torque. Despite being rear wheel drive only, in Australia anyway, Kia claims the 1800 odd kilogram Stinger GT will get from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds, thanks in part to a launch control function. When it came to building the Stinger, Kia had some important objectives, but key among them was to build an affordable, large performance car that could not only transport people long distances in comfort, but also put a smile on your face when the roads got interesting. Now the car that used to do that in Australia and do that pretty well was the Holden Commodore. But since the iconic Aussie-built sedan has now morphed into a German-built mid-size liftback, seemingly the Stinger has the market somewhat cornered. But if it's going to be the ultimate Gran Turismo that Kia wants it to be, it needs to tick a few boxes. It needs to be spacious, it needs to be able to comfortably accommodate people and their stuff, and it needs to be able to handle some corners. To be honest with you, I'm not entirely sold that it nails the first two, but as for the third, the good news is <laughs> the Stinger GT loves the twisty stuff. Along with being relatively quiet and vibration free inside the cabin, the Stinger's got really effortless torque. This engine is an absolute beast. It's a bit stealth because it doesn't make a lot of noise, but there's plenty of power on tap. and until 6,000 RPM, but that 510 Newton meter hit of torque, well, that's available from as little as 1,300 RPM, which means not only does it have real hustle out of corners, it's also very easy to speed in. The driving experience as well is pretty smooth thanks to this in-house developed eight-speed automatic transmission. It's the only transmission you can get. Luckily, it's pretty good. If you want to take manual control, there are the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, although they feel quite cheap and plasticky. And it is lacking a manual mode, which means while you can shift down yourself, if you leave it in gear for long enough, the car will again just take control by itself. Now, while I actually think the car in comfort mode is at its best, a simple turn of this little dial, put it into sport, you can feel that adaptive suspension stiffen up, the steering get heavier, you hear a little bit more synthesized engine noise, it just feels a little bit more strapped down. The rack mounted motor driven power steering system is pretty good. The turning circle on the Sting is 11.2 meters which gives you an idea of how tight it turns and it's plenty responsive, it's plenty sharp, it just lacks a fair bit of feedback which means you don't get that engagement that you really want. That said, with a limited slip rear differential as standard, the car has exceptional balance. Speaking of balance, it's no wonder it's pretty good because Kia says they developed the Stinger at the Nürburgring with additional suspension tuning also done locally. And given it's slightly shorter but actually wider than a BMW 5 Series, for a car this size and weight, the Stinger GT feels really, really good. 
it's really planted, it's got great brakes, it loves a direction change. I can totally see why so many people are raving about it. It's a lot of fun. The thing I love most about the Stinger though is just how big a step forward it is for the brand. Not only does it mark the changing of the guard for affordable large performance cars here in Australia, it's also yet another example of just how far Korean car makers have come in the last few years. The catch is, here in Australia at least, the Stinger GT costs $59,990 before on-road costs. And while that is significantly cheaper than any BMW 5 Series or Mercedes-Benz E-Class, it's also more expensive than the top-spec version of the new European-built Holden Commodore. And so far this year in terms of sales, the Stinger is trailing the new Holden Commodore by around 20%. So I guess the real question for Kia is, as good as the Stinger may be, just how many people are actually going to buy one? I'm having a little bit too much fun in this car. Awesome, awesome day today. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And remember to subscribe. See you next time.